We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, done done that. that. Take learning to the next level by incorporating a lot of field trips into your homeschool. Field trips are the perfect example of hands-on real-life learning. Today in episode 26, where do homeschoolers go for field trips? We're going to discuss how to find unique field trips, how to organize one, and we're also going to discuss the costs associated with going on field trips. We're going to be talking about all that and more. And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, We want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Great, Maria. What are you up to today? I went to a baby shower today. A good Aww. friend of mine is having a baby. Oh, how exciting. How it, exciting. It was themed cuties, like the little oranges. Oh. It was so cute. Oh, cuties. All the decor, all the games. And the mom-to-be had a beautiful orange dress on, and her belly looked like a little cutie. Oh, my gosh. That's adorable. It was super cute. Oh, what a great day. <laughs> what a great day for a baby shower, too. Where was it? It was uh, White Rock Lake down in Dallas. Oh. It overlooked the lake. It was gorgeous, and it was 70 degrees. I oh, my gosh. It. How perfect. Yeah. Oh, I bet that was a fun time. Yeah. Parking wasn't fun, but it <laughs> was a good time. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. I wish we could pick oranges here. I know, but you know what we can pick? What? Blueberries. It's almost blueberry (gasps) picking time. it is almost blueberry picking season. Every year we do our field trip to the blueberry farm. We do. It's super cool. I remember the one year it was especially cool because they finally opened a Bucky's like on the way. (laughs) They did. Yeah. So we went and had breakfast and then went to the blueberry field. So then we didn't eat all the blueberries before like we put them in the thing. Like I always feel like they should weigh the kid. You know, when they weigh your bucket at the end, like maybe they should weigh your baby before and after, like when you come in. Oh, because the babies ate. Off the- <laughs> yeah, oh they gosh. would eat just yeah. all of them. My kids ate a lot that day. So, <laughs> but you know, in the little gift shop, they have everything already pre-made. If you don't want to go home and cook it, they had the blueberry right. pie and jam and everything. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I will schedule that field trip, actually. Yep. Yeah, I'm Let's excited do it. Do it to it. Don't you just love a great field trip? I do. Yeah, field trips are one of the best ways to enjoy learning in a fun way with homeschool groups or even just with your own family. And the opportunities are endless. It's great to use a field trip as a nice break after a busy week in school or to use it to actually complement a lesson that you're already doing. We were lucky to live in certain parts of the country that were relevant to the history that we were learning at the time. And uh, like, how fun is it to actually be able to put your hands on history, you know? Yeah, that's like, a great part about oh, homeschooling. Yeah, or other things you might be learning about. Um, I think I mentioned before one time that we've sometimes driven down to our local art museum just to see like one piece of art. Because it's free to the public, you know, it's right. uh, it's easy to do. And so, you know, when you have access to that kind of stuff, it's great to incorporate it into your school right yeah one of the biggest benefits of homeschooling is that we are keepers of our own time and that means that we're not at all limited to schooling during the week and only having afternoons and weekends for exploring for all these awesome field trips one of my favorite things is to hit the museum on a Monday morning or a Thursday afternoon, have it all to myself. I've uh. learned for, I learned Friday afternoons a lot of the schools do their field trips, right. so we have learned to not do field not trips on do Fridays. Those. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I always joke with people that I homeschool so that I never have to go to like the zoo or the mall on a Saturday. <laughs> You know, and there's a million memes about homeschoolers being sad when school is out or happy when school goes back because now we get all our parks and museums back. (laughs) Oh, it's so true. Whenever I think about field trips, I'm always having to consider the cost associated with it. As a single mom, you know, unfortunately, it's just part of our life that I have to always think about the cost. You know, some people are like 20 bucks for a field trip, no big deal. But for me and my budget, it is a big deal. Yeah, so. sure. I mean, and especially if you have more than one child as well, like right. that adds up. If, There's a lot tw- of... if it's $20 entrance fee and you have four kids, that's, yeah. that gets costly really quick. That's a big day. So are field trips expensive for homeschoolers? 
The short answer to that is that they don't have to be. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of places that charge an entry fee or an admission, but there are also places that you can visit for free. Tons of them. You could also consider planning your own field trip in order to get a free or a discounted rate, which we're going to be talking about that here in a bit. I know I've done that many times because it got me and my kids into the facility for free. Oh, for sure. And one of the things I would like to share before we start getting into those are two organizations that offer reciprocal programs. Basically, if you have a membership in your town to one of these participating museums or facilities or to the program itself, you can often use these benefits in other places. I had a friend in a small town uh, that joined a museum by mail, like one that's like far off that she'd never even has been to, but it was a low cost to join that museum and it put her in one of these reciprocal programs and then she was able to go to all kinds of other places. I've, I've used them in many cities. I've traveled often and been able to go to museums that I would have never been able to afford otherwise. Yeah, it's just amazing. So the first one is ASTC Passport Program. It's the Association of Science and Technology Centers. And if you're a member of a science center like here in Dallas, like we belong to the Perot Museum, uh, you're then eligible for benefits like free admission when you travel outside your local area. And they've got a whole list of participating things on their website, which we'll drop in our show notes. And then the second one is the American Horticultural Society. If you have a membership card from here or from a garden like we Again, here in Dallas, we have the Dallas Arboretum. Mm -hmm. And if you join that, then you are then in that. They've got like 345 some gardens across North America that you can also get into for free or discounted. Yeah, it's a really, really cool. Um, And there's rules with these. Like even though we're in a metroplex with like two large cities, um, I think you have to pay extra for the Perot to be able to get into the Science Museum in Fort Worth or the Heard Museum. But still, it's a great workaround to get free admission. Like you said, with traveling, like sometimes I would, if I was on like a long road trip, I would even make my stops along the way, one of these that I had a visit for. And then because it was free, like we didn't feel like we needed to do the whole museum. We could seriously go in, spend 20 minutes and then leave. Yeah. Potty break kids. Okay, let's get out and explore the museum too. (laughs) But So they're pretty awesome. Yeah. So one of the best places to find free field trips is going to be through your local state and your national public services. Your state capital. I know that we visited our state capital here in Austin, Texas many times and we've done it with family with my extended family my brother's family we actually did it for a summer vacation but right. extended all the things that we were learning in government in our homeschool to that so we talked about it's that so cool. during that whole trip yeah that's a neat a place and you can do like walking tour like by yourself like they have like a brochure that you can do or you can uh, wait they I think they run them several times a day too oh yeah it's a beautiful the grounds are just glorious yeah Uh, The airport uh, here in DFW, I have a buddy that works in the tower and we were going to, we were actually going to do a field trip there, but unfortunately that's when COVID hit and everything got shut down. Actually, I should go back to that and reschedule that. Yeah, see if they could do that again. (laughs) Yeah, I think they have that little park there. Have you been to that little park? We have. It's an overlook where you can, we've picnicked there. Yeah, we have too. covered picnic areas and you can just sit there and watch the planes take off and land. Yeah, yeah, and they they play the tower live, the air traffic controllers and the planes. And it's super cool. Yeah. So any of your kids that are interested in flight, that's a l- the little ones really love that. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, the fire station. I mean, who doesn't love a good firefighter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so our, <laughs> our good friend Amy really enjoyed firefighters and she would plan a lot of fire <laughs> trip so we did that a lot Uh, we actually took a little excursion there during Halloween when we were doing a little Halloween party at the park and my son got a ring stuck on his finger so we skedaddled over there and Plano to the fire station and met a few firefighters that cut that thing off of him oh how funny (laughs) so that was a little field trip yeah Uh, city hall safety town up in Frisco oh, they yeah. have the awesome well it's weird because the bicycles are a little too big for the kids that go there but then once they're big enough to ride the bikes they're a little too old for the uh, right right but it's such a cool place because it's it got is. all those different little buildings and the roads it and the little stoplights cute. it's such a cute place like the kids really wanted to I remember my older kids wanted to go along with their younger sister you know they were like we'll just be helpers but it was really because they wanted to go and they had aged out of it. Yeah, it's <laughs> such a cute little, it's like a little town. It's got traffic lights and then you go and you, you know, yeah, yeah, it's super cute. And it's easy to set up field trips there. Like they're made for that. That's what, it's an outreach program. So they do school groups all the time. Yeah, they do safety training, fire training, all that in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another public service would be um, the post office. 
a we, lot well, of we've done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff that you can learn there. Um, a library tour, and sometimes your local universities are great for this. They might have a you know bigger library than your local library. You might already know as homeschoolers your local library by heart. But sometimes it's fun to go and learn all about the Dewey Decimal System and all of that stuff. But some of the local universities might have you know museum exhibits in there too. Our, the Dallas Public Library has amazing some really cool stuff. They've got like a first folio from Shakespeare. And the, oh, yeah. and then remember they have that oh gosh what's that even called they have that room that room where well remember we had a virtual king yeah you can arrange you can arrange virtual field trips there on all kinds of topics we did one on our co-op was doing like medieval theme that year yeah we did some kind of talk with a king and there was a king and a lord or something and they were also on the big screen yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember what exactly it was, but it was really neat. Like, I'm sure the kids learned something. <laughs> yeah, it partners with like different people and different universities and different things you can arrange in advance, all kinds of different shows that you They were doing would a do. medieval dance. They were doing the circle. Like, yeah. they, it was super fun. It was yeah. really neat. A recycling center. Oh, uh, yeah, we did that uh, up in McKinney. Uh, they actually had the conveyor belt. They would The dump trucks would come in, dump everything, and yeah. everything would just go up the conveyor. And they actually had sorters. And the kids were fascinated watching how fast their hands were moving plastic or things that didn't go in the sorter. You yeah. Know, just pulling them out. That was, that was really cool. Those are always really neat. We did a water treatment facility uh, tour, too. I remember I, I think that. You, I think you were there at that one as yeah. well. It was a little smelly, but it was also totally fascinating, and the kids really got a kick out of learning, you know, where our water goes, how it gets cleaned, and moves on from there. That's the first time I've ever gone. I didn't know how all that happened, so I learned alongside my children at that field trip. Oh, for sure. That happens a lot. Environmental centers um, are also great places that are often free to the public because they're all about education and outreach. So we've got like a little one here in Plano Mm -hmm. that, yeah, I drove by one day that it's right next to their trash facility place. And so they've they talk all about composting and all kinds of different things. It's a really neat place. But um, we're going to talk more about all kinds of field trips in our next section. We just wanted to kind of cover some of the free ones. Also, uh, when we talked about state capitals, our nation's capital is a great free. If you can get there, once you get there, like everything in Washington, D.C. is free. The museums, everything. It's a great place to visit. So just a reminder that this is a weekly episode. We drop one every Thursday morning just for you. And if you have any additional ideas or comments, please come and comment on our Facebook page on the episode thread or send us an email at info at btdthomeschool.com. We'd really love to hear from you. So how do you find unique field trips? Well, that's a great question. The first thing you could think about is transportation. Can you include transportation as an element of your trip? Does your area have a train or a bus or trolley or boat or any other alternative transportation that might be not typically taken? Include it in your trip. For little kids, just the transportation ride can be a field trip in itself. One of our friends used to pack snacks and a book with her boys and just take the train to, all the way to the end and back again. Yeah, yeah. there was no no other. I was like, where'd you guys go? She was like, oh, no, we just went on, on the, the train. train and back home. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fun. At some point when homeschool kids are young, they're all like, we want to go to school. And it's actually not about school. Sometimes it's just that they want to ride a bus. And that was what that <laughs> was that what it was. Kids? Oh yeah, yeah. They really wanted to ride a bus and have a lunchbox. So we bought lunch boxes and we took a bus ride. Easy. Yeah. Easy, easy. Easy fit. <laughs> I coach a Future City engineering team. It's a nationwide engineering competition for middle schoolers. And we've found some really cool field trips to go along with our topic for each year. We've toured a wetland filtration facility that we have nearby. It's about an hour away, um, but super cool. Uh, Last year, I reached out to a commercial landfill for a tour because we were doing a big project on garbage. And I actually couldn't get into any of our like local waste facilities. I I was just able to get into this commercial one because of COVID. Like everything was still real limited, but this ended up being the coolest tour. Yeah. Like they brought us in, they let us climb on all the equipment. Like they <laughs> took us all over the place. They gave us prizes. We learned so much. I actually came home from that trip talking to my husband about how I might want a career in waste <laughs> management. Like it was insane. But the funny thing was like after that tour, they were so great. I was like, how many students do you guys bring in here for trips and stuff? And, uh, they were like, we've never had, nobody's ever come here. You're the first group we've ever had. Nobody That's nobody insane. wants to come to the commercial nice. waste facility landfill. 
And we were like, what? Like, this was the best field trip we've ever taken. So don't be afraid to call. That's my point. Don't be afraid to call and just ask if someone would be interested in showing you their workplace. We also have a friend who coaches a local model United Nations group, uh, Sarah. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And every year her team represents a country and she immerses them in learning all kinds of things about that country. She finds the coolest events and activities. One year when we were representing Italy, she took us to an Italian car show, which my car kid loved it. Yeah. Uh, we did a Latin Vespers. We did mass at a monastery. We did, we went to an Italian restaurant. We also had an Italian cooking lesson for a holiday meal remember that yeah and so good yeah she did so many other awesome things we've been to asian art talks as um, when we were representing china and budan and we went to a mosque that was super cool i remember that my mm -hmm. kids remember that one very clearly when we were representing kuwait and we also did a greek festival when we were representing greece yeah she really uh, how she finds some of this stuff <laughs> is amazing she's really great right but, but you know ask around to other parents in your group too like you were saying about the air traffic and I forgot we have two air traffic control friends um uh, what kind of jobs do your friends' spouses have? Uh, your neighbors, your uncle. Uh, through the years, we've toured my dad's air traffic control radar facility. Uh, we've done my husband's hotel's commercial laundry. Like <laughs> he was trying to bring everybody into the hotel, but really, that's what the kids wanted. They wanted to see like the giant sheet oh, folder. I want to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's awesome. Too bad he's not in the hotels anymore. <laughs> right. Um. Oh, you were able to get us into uh, your kid's dad's company once to see the giant pendulum. <laughs> Rebecca right? fell in the water. She did fall in the fountain. <laughs> oh gosh, that was really cool because it's it works with the Earth's rotation. Yeah, but the pendulum is it's it's the coolest thing. If you're ever in Dallas, you have to go to. It's across from the DMA, but can, but probably you can't just go there, right? Like you got us in. Well, you just walk in the foyer and you can oh, take okay. a peek before security yeah. escorts you out. Don't fall in the fountain. But isn't it like one of three <laughs> of these pendulums like in the world or something? There was oh, something yeah. really unique about it. They're fascinating. Anybody that's interested in STEM, if you're near Dallas, sneak in there and, and check it out. It's do so cool. it. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> Okay, so other interesting job type field trips might include a bakery. We went to one that gave the kids dough and let them shape and bake it and took the wheat seeds home to grow. That was super fun. Yeah. Oh, a pizza parlor. Sometimes they'll let you, the kids bake the pizza and make yeah. the pizzas. And sometimes they'll give them away for free. That's happened too before yeah. for us. Uh, local coffee shops going behind the scenes. Oh, we went to a bean roaster one time up in McKinney. There was actually a coffee roaster and the kids learned all about different coffee beans how to roast them and my kids are coffee connoisseurs now since then <laughs> yeah a cool way to learn uh grocery tours or factory tours we did a i think uh i think it was central market oh, it was market street market street that's right they did a whole a tour of all the different aisles everything and was, the and back and the it was yeah. completely free and they give I think the kids got pizza and cookies and oh yeah they had all kinds lunch. of giveaways like a whole bag full of stuff so it was pretty neat oh, one of the coolest uh, ones we did was the Amazon warehouse oh wow Tetris on steroids oh my gosh that is the coolest that the way that they've actually programmed all of the computers and all of the artificial intelligence to yeah. navigate everything. The robots, there's robots moving like everywhere. They have to tell you like you have to stay within these lines because there's robots just moving around. It and, is so cool. Oh my gosh. The kids loved, <laughs> loved that one. And the, like I say kids, that was, we took our high schoolers there like a couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, they still talk that about was it. was recently. <laughs> also an ice cream shop, you know, again, like let's maybe we'll get some free ice cream, but we've done <laughs> a couple of those zero nitrogen kind of ice cream places where they do that and it totally ends up being a science that lesson. That is super cool. Yeah, super, super cool. Another thing is you could explore the arts. We've seen a ton of live shows, all kinds of them. We've oh, done yeah. symphony groups. Um, often they have kid performances or matinees. They'll do student showings. We've also gone to the opera for dress rehearsals. That was always free. It wasn't even a dumbed down version of the show. It was a real show. And right. They were completely in costume. And by the time they're at dress rehearsal, it's not even watching. Like, you're watching the whole show. Yeah. It's like the they're, nobody's opera. yelling like cut in the middle and like, let's go back and do it. Like, 
they've they've got it down by the time they're in their full ensembles that, for the show. Yeah. So those are really, really cool. And surprisingly, my middle schoolers at the time loved the opera. They fell in love with the opera because yeah. of going to those free shows. Well, and sometimes just exposing your kids. And you don't have to love opera and fine arts and, you know, all of that. But, like, just exposing your kids, you never know what their takeaway is from that. So right. we would sometimes go into those opera shows saying, you know what, if we just stay for the first act, that that's all we have to do. But oftentimes everybody would want to stay for the rest right. like after intermission. You never know what is going to uh, touch you. Right. So. And then there's the symphony halls, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, when the kids were little, we ended up, they did a lot of the shows and Peter Wolf and they do a whole instrument zoo. And that's always fun for the kids to learn yep. about the different instruments. Yep. Um, or sometimes they'll do the shows where they play like all the movie scores. Like yes. Indiana Jones and Jurassic Park, and it's all songs that you know yeah, from the kids are re- they recognize things. them? Star and they're Wars, super fun. Yeah, they and then they fall in love with the symphony. That's what you want. You want them to appreciate the arts. Yeah, it's really really cool. Obviously, we have kids that do children's theater, but we've been to a lot of children's theater as well, and theater that caters to children too. So uh, a lot of school shows and matinees for those. And again, we. We try and go to like anything we have the opportunity to go see. We've seen puppets. We've seen. Well, uh, and all of these, a lot of times you'll have one group that organizes it. And, you know, sometimes they're they're really expensive, like $20 tickets. And I think we paid maybe $6 a ticket whenever yeah. we went. And of course, if I organized it, I got in free. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, Shakespeare in the Park. We've done. Oh. Uh, we used to do that like every summer because you can bring a picnic dinner. It's a lot of fun. Right. And they give away tickets for free to the school kids. And yeah. so our kids have friends that are in school that don't use them. So we use them. Yeah, we love those. Yeah. Different kinds of uh, look around at your local universities or community colleges. Sometimes they're doing like showcases. So SMU here in town, we've gone to a couple of their, they call them brown bag chamber music or uh, dance things that they do during lunchtime. You're supposed to bring a a lunch and you sit and you watch and they're, they're just really cool. I think the chamber music one was like cookies and chamber music or something. They lure you in with treats, but like we would have gone (laughs) anyway without the treat. And a lot of local concerts are in the square, like the little town squares we have a lot of cities that surround dallas and all of them have their own unique concerts a lot of them are do like summer concert series and things and we did the kildares we did oh yeah (laughs) that was a fun one we loved those yeah those are so fun and then of course my son he's a musician he does open mic nights but also you know before he would participate we would go and enjoy the local musicians and that's always a lot of fun to just expose them they start to think they're like hey could i do this and yeah you'd be surprised that some of these kids we have a a little girl that comes she's eight and she performs every week with her dad she's oh speaking, that's so neat she sings x's and oh, oh. So we cute. remember for a while um the um at that other theater near us did an open mic night and it was for anything like you could do oh, spoken word you did. could do yeah, yeah it was really we, they did improv before yeah, yeah yeah and they could do all kinds of things my kids went and danced there it was it was a lot of fun I don't remember the name of that place. Stage door. Was it stage door? Something like that. Anyway, Anyway. it doesn't matter. (laughs) Okay, so there's a lot of things you could do on field trips that explore the outdoors. Like you could do the John Deere store or a farm and fleet kind of place. They'll open the doors for your kids. They love to have kids come in and check out the place and they'll show them the store and show them all kinds of things that are going on in that. (laughs) What? I have a picture that I saw in my Facebook memories and it's Jane and she's looking into a cage of rabbits at a, what are those called? They're not called farm and fleet stores. Uh, Tractor supply, farm uh, supply. Anyway, Jane is looking into a cage full of rabbits lovingly and she really wanted to bring them home. And then there's a sign on the cage and it says meat rabbits. Oh no, poor Jane. (laughs) Does she know what that meant? No. No, she didn't. So that's why the picture is funny. (laughs) We did not bring any home to eat or otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Okay, so exploring the outdoors some more. There's the pumpkin patch. We have included this every year. Even as teenagers, we take the kids to the pumpkin patch still. We did it this year. We did. I I think they they might have been a little too old for it. But we weren't. We weren't. We loved it. I love it. Woo, hayride. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I like it. We were laughing at them. (laughs) They were looking at us like we were crazy. Yeah. Um, so, of course, nature hikes. We did a whole episode on nature, uh, nature centers, wildlife preserves, um, a guarantee that you've got one in your town or nearby that mm-hmm. you can go visit. Um, or a beekeeper. I'm putting together a field trip for our Girl Scout group 
right now to go see a beekeeper. I don't know if you did that one. Yeah, we the did. Co-op. The, We're the, going to go see the same guy. The, I think it's called the Texas Beekeepers Association. Oh, yeah. That's where we learned about colony collapse disorder. CCD. Oh, yeah. So oh, I scary. forgot about that little convention. Yeah. That was super, super cool. I learned so much. I really wanted to keep bees after that. And I, I know. got too busy because I was homeschooling. But... Well, my husband said no to bees. <laughs> he was like, no. Well, we need a pollinate. Be... We lose all the food if we lose the bees. I know. I know. He's allergic. I mean, I guess he is has he an really? excuse for not letting me I have didn't bees. I did know he but, was yeah. allergic. Okay. Yes. You could also explore a Christmas tree farm during the holidays in the winter months. Those are fun, especially if you live up north and sometimes you can go chop down your own tree. That's super cool. Uh, fruit picking. We talked about that. We're going to be doing one here in May. I think it's May and June is when the blueberry fields open up for yeah. us to eat all the berries off the steel. Yeah. All the berries and we eat did them. strawberries in another <laughs> town and we also have been able to do apples in other places, but I don't think they do that. We did here. persimmons in Houston, and cool. I actually made fruit leather with it. It makes really great fruit, fruit oh, leather. Oh, yum, yeah, yum. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Farmer's Market here, they actually opened it up to children. We did a garden session there one year where they taught you about gardening, composting, and that. I'll put some pictures on the website. That was a lot of fun. There's also the, the state and U.S. parks. There's the Junior Ranger program. We've talked about that. Uh, we talked about the Every Kid Outdoors program with if you have a fourth grader in your family that you and or your fourth grader and everyone in your car will get in free. And so we'll put that on our website and yeah. put a link there. It's so if you awesome. have a fourth grader, you can also get in free with your family. Yeah, that's super cool. Tulip Farm, they're, uh, I've keep forgetting to do it might be too late already i think yeah, they were all, a, already lot, happened I, yeah here. i have a lot of friends that went to the tulip farm this year and i asked cameron he said no i know it's a little bit far but it does take the best pictures for everyone's instagram yeah i have i have a lot of pictures and he actually i have one picture where he was sketching the tulips with keely oh how and the sweet. Tulip. yeah it's a really oh cute picture yeah, so i have cute ones i think we went I, I think i went once i don't know that i went back another I year i think that's some of the problems i did so many field trips when they were little and he's like nope I did that <laughs> so, yeah yeah that sometimes I also saw a picture of in my Facebook memories recently of uh, we were at the the Dogwood Audubon Center and mm -hmm. the kids did a nature class there and it's of Jillian and she is sitting with her arms crossed and she's got the <laughs> crabbiest look on her face because she would she told me later she was really mad because they had done a snake demonstration and they have a hog nose snake there which is my favorite snake but they brought out a corn snake for the demonstration, which is kind of your typical nature center example snake. And Jillian was so mad about this. She was like, not another corn snake. <laughs> I've seen so many oh corn God. snakes in my life. I don't want to see any more corn snakes. Oh my gosh. So yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there's a lot to say in making sure that the field trips have a lot of variety, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, history, again, here, there's so many examples for history field trips. Uh, one is your local landmarks. Um, I do a, I lead a Dallas hike. I do it a, a couple times a year. It's a, one of my more popular hikes. Everybody likes to come out for it. And it is, uh, it's just one that we do around the downtown and it hits all the landmarks. And I remember the first time I, I, I found it in a book, uh, but the first time I did it, like I had several people who are from Dallas in my group and they were like wow like i've lived here my whole life and i've never seen like any of this stuff and there's even that thanksgiving chapel that we go to that mm -hmm. is a picture that is widely spread on the internet all the time it's this gorgeous like stained it's glass beautiful. picture that people use all the time that we like none of us had any idea that that was actually like something that's in dallas yeah. so. it's actually the ceiling of the building and when the yeah. kids walk in it's very quiet and peaceful it's a meditation area and they walk in and they lay on their backs and they look up at that it's just gorgeous it's it's really beautiful i love it yeah. so that's a favorite one but there's an app i love called gps my city um, i use this while traveling and you can read all kinds of articles on it about food things to do and then you can combine them into your own like map that works offline on your phone it's a really cool trick to do so you can look it up for your own town yeah, we'll put that link is. on our website. Also, there's Historic Cemetery down in Dallas. And we did up in here in Plano when I was running an art co-op, we decided to do rubbings. And we took these huge sheets of paper to the cemetery, to an old, old cemetery. Yeah. And we placed the papers, took a crayon, took the paper off the crayon and did little rubbings. That was super cool. That That's was actually neat. Was combining art with historic area. So, oh, the Holocaust Human Rights Museum here in Dallas. That is a very powerful place. So, you know, you need to approach 
approach with caution if you have younger children that are sensitive. That's your job is teaching your children about the history. And this is a really great way to really instill what the gravity of some of these issues are. Sure. Uh, there's the historical societies. So that's a great place for you to take your kids. Uh, colonial reenactments or pioneer trips. There's a lot of that that happens um, just on the other side of the border in Oklahoma. <laughs> they get really into it, into the costuming and everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sarah was talking about Ben had done a uh, some kind of Revolutionary War field trip where they were in costumes, except it was really cold weather. And like the her stories of the day are really funny because the kids were all really struggling. <laughs> and the teacher was like, yeah, like you would have during the Revolutionary <laughs> War. <laughs> but I think it even got so bad that the teacher like called it off. But yeah, like uh, we love to visit, you know, different kinds of historic farms and farmsteads or small town kind of things, uh, blacksmithing, woodworking, glass making, candle making, all those kind of things. And I swear that probably every homeschooler at some point wants to be a blacksmith. <laughs> mine did. I know mine did too. Mine couldn't wait till he was old enough to like do the blacksmith yeah, internship it was 16, downtown. And they were always too young. So I'm yeah. like, when you're 16 and once they hit 16, uh, <laughs> magically wasn't an issue anymore. Right. Suddenly they did not want to be a blacksmith. I don't know. But... I think maybe secretly Riley has it in the back of her mind that she still wants to be a blacksmith. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend who's, uh, whose boyfriend is actually a blacksmith. Oh. Yeah. That's we fun. need to bring him. Where, where does he work? We North need to go Carolina. to a field. Oh, okay. We're not going to a field trip. <laughs> well, there. it'll have to be a long road trip. <laughs> um, also, uh, Native American cultural centers. Uh, we're lucky. Again, we live near uh, Oklahoma, and there are two really large centers there, as well as the First Nations Museum in Oklahoma City. So those are great places to get some hands-on learning. Another thing you might want to incorporate is teaching about animals in your homeschool. You can take your children to local aquariums. You can also go to where here we have a local reptile store, which they'll bring the animals out and show them to your children. And oh, yeah. won't yeah. just be a corn snake. No. And I remember when our friend Galadriel, she gave us all little tiny praying mantises and I, we didn't know what to feed them. And she says, just go to the store and they have little teeny tiny crickets. I think they might've oh. been called um, pill crickets or something, something tiny. And they were so cute and I didn't want the praying mantis to eat them and but they did. But the praying mantis is cute too. Yeah, they, they eat everything. They're they're cannibals. Oh, you know the the female devours the male after mating. Oh well, I mean, there's so, the upside there's the to upside. that. <laughs> Sorry guys. There's also the zoo, which I wouldn't recommend during the weekend or. Yeah, no, definitely it's during the yeah. or dollar days. I think it was. Oh, it was dollar misery. days. Yeah, no, but <laughs> but as a homeschooler, you can totally go to the zoo on like Tuesday afternoon. Also, there's that sweet spot, that afternoon sweet spot, where even <laughs> if there are kids at a thing, that they have to get back on the bus. So like going to these places. At oh, like when they start lining up for the bus, my children like, start. Yes. yes. Yes, now we can have the zoo to ourselves. <laughs> you can also visit a farm or a horse ranch or um, an animal shelter. We animal took shelter. the kids to the Rehoboth Ranch where they learned how to milk goats. That was super Oh, fun. yeah, and... yeah. We did a, a goat milking thing. Yeah. Um, Sharkarosa, we went out to that Sharkarosa yeah. uh, ranch. My kids love those like wildlife parks that aren't really like zoos necessarily, but like people's like exotic animal like a rehabilitation center yeah like fossil fossil rim is one oh that's fossil rim it's a drive a wildlife, wildlife park. park yeah those are really cool kind of places Maybe we've we been should... to some different areas your local museums are a great resource there are typically art museums history museums we have a great science museum you mentioned earlier there's the perot uh, there's also a lot of great military and war museums if you're studying a certain era Unfortunately, here, the one that we went here when we we're studying the Civil War, I'm like, great, there's a field trip for the Civil War Museum. We're going to go. Well, we're in Texas, and it was a Confederate Civil yeah, War Museum. Yeah, it was a little, yeah. It was a little Not, not so. Uh... <laughs> it wasn't exactly what, but you know what? They saw Robert E. Lee's sword. That was yeah. super cool. Well, and Sarah was just talking about, again, our friend Sarah booked um, this one because she books really cool trips and and it was it was interesting but she had some different education programs that she could choose from and she chose one that was on medical treatments in war and do you remember like I they do. hauled out a mannequin and like went to chop its they leg hor off horrified the children <laughs> like they horrified the kids Sarah was like this will be interesting and then we had people like almost vomiting it was it was <laughs> 
Okay, it's it funny was really now. funny. It, maybe at the moment it wasn't. It was. It a makes day. for a good story. Yes. <laughs> But there's all kinds of other museums, uh, music museum. You guys went mm-hmm. on your music trip, did Rock you? Rock and Roll just... Hall of Fame yep. up in Cleveland, Ohio. I know we're going to Nashville this summer, so I know that we will be going to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Oh, you should go to Graceland. We, I took the kids. I've, I've, we've been. So you know how when you go into a venue, sometimes they'll make you do like a group photo, and and then you're supposed to buy it at the end, but they're always way overpriced. Right. Well, so my family. We always take the most ridiculous photo that we can, but we took one at Graceland that was so awesomely awful that we had to buy it. At the end, <laughs> we made it our Christmas card no. that year. It's our Graceland okay. photo. Okay, so your your terrible photo that you never would buy, you had to buy because it we was We had so to buy terrible. and make it into our Christmas card photo. So you can do that if you visit some historic home. There's also a flight museum. Uh, we just finally went to the one that we use as the venue for our Oh, um, the Frontiers of Flight homecoming. Museum. Yeah, that was that museum was awesome cultural museums of different sorts presidential museums or presidential libraries so we are my family has a huge fondness for these my son has a goal to like visit all the presidential they are libraries. incredible if you've never visited one you have one near you definitely check it out yes. with your kids yeah it doesn't even have to be a president that you liked they're yeah. always interesting. They always have a lot of stuff. They'll have a lot of really cool stuff from the time period. We went to the President Johnson Library, and it was amazing. He's got a whole like Motown exhibit oh, really? with music, things people wore on stage for different famous concerts. Okay, like, I might have to visit that. Oh, yeah, it's fabulous. You can also visit a planetarium. There's a great one here in Fort Worth and also at UT Arlington. Yeah, that's really great. We also went on a field trip with one of our groups. I don't remember if you were on that one. There's this guy who owns this giant super expensive telescope like out in Princeton and he like built a barn that the top opens and he can oh, wow. look up there yeah so somebody found him and he invited us all out he's also a beekeeper uh, we got like a two for one uh, <laughs> field trip going on there he was a great guy though and he had all the kids come in and let us look through the telescope that's pretty cool here in Frisco there's the astronomy club and we've been a part of that and there's a lot of just novice astronomers and they have these huge telescopes and once a month, they set them up and they invite anybody in the community to come out and look through. I think that um, Jupiter was in its prime. We got to see the the big storm. Oh, yeah. During yeah. that time. So. Yeah. If you know people who have a weird hobby, those are the folks you want to hit up <laughs> for a yeah. field trip idea. For sure. They often love to love to show off their stuff and tell you what they know. Oh, and there's also the IMAX theater. Oh, yeah. I love IMAX movies. Yeah, the Fort Worth Museum has a great one there. So yeah. we've been there. My parents live in Fort Worth. So we visit that one many times. Yeah, and documentaries are always, they're like an hour usually, which is kind of perfect for even your little people to watch something. And I'd watch anything on an IMAX screen, really. Yeah. Any documentary. Well, and if there's a topic specifically that you're studying in your homeschool, it's a great way to go out and see that. Yeah. So a lot of tiny towns have local museums, and uh, that is something I like to do on a road trip, is to stop at all these funky little museums. My kids, I don't know that they appreciate that so much, maybe when they're older, but but like, so in our old town in Louisiana, there was a tiny local museum, and so one day I was like, we should go in and see what's in there. And so there was this big glass display, and it had like a taxidermied alligator and a raccoon and this nest of eggs, And the old museum lady, who was probably, like, as old as the museum, comes over and she's like, y'all, look. Look at that mean old alligator stealing that raccoon's eggs. (laughs) (laughs) My my Jane just, like, looked at her like she was nuts and was like, "Uh, raccoons are mammals. (laughs) Those are the alligator's eggs. And we were like, how many times has this lady told this story? And how many people believed it? I know. And like <laughs> left. So, yeah. So it was educational. <laughs> Not in the way we thought it would be. But still. Uh, well, actually, obviously, maybe it was educational for the lady. I don't know. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> it was so funny. Okay. Oh, there's probably plenty of festivals that are in your area. Here we have the Renaissance Festival. Oh, yeah. That That's is, a fun one. Oh, yeah. And the cultural festivals. There's the Greek, Ukrainian, the Irish Festival. There's the Hearst Romanian Festival. 
oh, we have the Chinese New Year. We have so many celebrations around town here oh, in yeah. Richardson. There's a big one, and I think they moved it this year. Did you? Make uh, no, it? I, yeah, I didn't get to go to whatever the new dates were. Yeah, they changed the date on us last minute for some people missed it. Oh, there's the International Festival in Plano. They have mm-hmm. a lot of great cuisine from many countries, which is yeah. a lot of reason to visit some of these festivals. Oh, absolutely. The food is why I'm here. Along those same lines, other cultural events, places. We talked earlier about visiting a mosque, churches, synagogues, um, temples. There's a Buddhist temple here in Dallas that uh, has a Thai uh, street food fair out behind it like every Saturday. It's amazing. So good. It's Delicious. so good. And and for you on a budget, it's super cheap. So it's a yeah. great reason to check out some of these places. For oh, it's food. awesome. Authentic. Yep. And then, uh, you know, all kinds of other festivals. Like we've got like a big hot air balloon festival here that happens every year. Yeah, and there's also the Gem and Mineral Convention. Oh, yeah, those are fun to go to. Awesome. There's the, Oh, there's a lot of music festivals here mm-hmm. in the area. And there's also a lot of, you know, music-centric cities like Austin. You can just take yeah. a little road trip and go check out all their festivals. There's Austin City Limits. Yeah, the um, great, great shows. We have the Wildflower Fest here in Richardson. Lots of live music. Mm-hmm. And they don't just have local musicians. They also, not that there's anything wrong. I love local musicians, but yeah. they also bring in some... Yeah, we went and saw the B-52s. We did. (laughs) We did. It was a lot of fun. So some other just uh, not necessarily educational, but like, you know, just fun activities would be like going to the roller skating ring. Yeah, here they have uh, homeschool skate once a week. Yeah, once a week. Um, Ice skating. Once a week. That was also once a week. We did a lot of ice skating. There's a lot of live sports games, uh, baseball, hockey, soccer, basketball, all of that can, a lot of those games go on during the day. Yeah, and a lot of them can be cheaper, low cost, especially if you're not doing like a major team, like a minor league team, things like that. And sometimes those, like for hockey, like minor league hockey is way more fun to attend than the major league hockey. Right, they are. They actually, yeah, they really incorporate the audience in a lot of those minor leagues. And I would like attend, like even if I didn't really like the sport, like I'll attend any Anything live yeah I, I just think it's fun yeah it's yeah you get you're really into it everybody gets into it even if you don't like the sport right. or care about the sport oh there's archery even if you some people some kids do archery as an, an elective but they also we've done it we've gone to the archery club just as a field trip before where they give like a little short lesson and the kids do that uh, there's the eSports arena. There's a huge one here in mm-hmm. Arlington. We've actually been there for a birthday party. And also you can do a lot of volunteering, which can count as field trips. Uh, we've just made sandwiches before and handed them out to the homeless uh, yeah. before down in Dallas. And that gives your kids a sense. We've met some really great people, actually. We've met yeah. some amazing military vets that are down on their luck and just wanted a warm meal and Educational for everybody. Senior centers. Now, we I, we do a lot of this for uh, dance anyway. We go and dance in senior centers, and I, we just enjoy that. We, we did that as a group, too, for a while. We mm-hmm. would go and visit with the, the folks at the memory care facility and do little shows we or did. play games or do crafts with them. That's a lot of fun. Well, and when the kids were teeny tiny, uh, when Rachel and Riley were teeny tiny, they for Halloween, they dressed up in their costumes, and they just did like a little costume parade at the oh, senior yeah. center. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. They love that. They love seeing those little kids there. They do. They do. Um, Refugee communities. uh, That's another like field trip that Sarah has set up for us before where we've gone in to visit um, and see what uh, we can do to help into these communities. Right. There's a lot of pop up travel exhibits that happen. Uh, There's the dinosaur park that was down there by the lake. That was that was really moves around. That dinosaur exhibit gets around town. Uh, There's also a global water center. Oh, yeah, we went over to that one day, like, just, yeah, it popped up over in Grapevine on its travels, and that was actually a really educational, super cool thing. We went through all these different buildings. It was neat. Um, sometimes there's ones, you know, for popular shows, like the Stranger Things exhibit was at Grapevine Mill. Well, I think it's still there. They yeah, keep extending it. it. <laughs> yeah. And it's really fun. Have you been to it? Yeah. Yeah, we went and did pictures. Uh, friends. Uh, the show Friends had had one uh, that we had to pay to get into that, but it was really fun with a lot of pictures. I also love kitschy tourist attractions. Like my <laughs> parents would never, my dad would never stop at these because he was not allowed to stop at them when he was a kid. And when we were in Florida one time, I passed a billboard for the Weeki Wachi Mermaids. And it's a state park and they have a live, they've been doing a live mermaid show there for like what? 50 years. I've never heard of that. Yeah, they're mermaids. 
I mean, they're obviously in mermaid costumes, but they're underwater and they do a full on Hans Christian Andersen, The Little Mermaid show, and they have air tubes and they will lip sync. Their eyes are open. They're lip syncing the show. And every now and then they'll like take a puff of air out of these tubes and they're doing flips and all in. It's a natural spring. It's incredible. And so like we went to it. It was the best show we've ever seen in our lives. I came back and I told my dad, I'm like, you lived in Florida. Like, why did you never take us here? And he was like, we were never allowed to. He was like, that sounds awesome. And so then they came over and watched it with us the next day. Wow, that sounds great. Yeah. We will include some of the links and ideas and everything that we're talking about on our show notes on our website. So be sure to check that out after you listen. So that was just a ton of field trip ideas that we talked about. But let's get down to the nitty gritty then. How do you organize a field trip? Well, organizing a field trip isn't difficult, but it's going to require a bit of organization and a lot of patience, though. (laughs) Uh, Be creative and plan things you know that your family is going to enjoy. Plan ahead and contact a business to see if they offer free tours or discounted rates for groups. Most of them will, especially during the day and they don't have schools coming in all the time. I've often booked field trips for places that I want to go, but maybe they have a high entrance price that we can get a group discount on. I talked about that earlier. Sometimes the organizer even gets a free ticket and that's a great motivation for booking as well. I've also searched out specific programs that might go along with a class I'm teaching or a group that we attend that would complement that. Yeah, and one thing I consider before planning any type of field trip or event is, would I be okay doing this if we were the only ones that show up? (laughs) (laughs) Like, especially if there's an early morning or a long drive involved. And obviously there are things like sports style activities or some classes that are not going to be fun with just your family. But generally, if we're okay with it being just us, then anyone else attending alongside us is just going to be pure, like fun friend bonus to me. Right. Second, is there a cost that needs to be paid up front or a minimum number needed for an event to happen at a certain price? If so, you really need a firm commitment from your attendees And I would caution you putting up your personal dollars if you aren't sure if you can recoup those costs. It's totally fine for you to put out info about the event and request that dollar amount up front. You can also say something like, you're not confirmed until I've had both your RSVP and your program fee. Also determine and state if your event is refundable or not. I've booked groups in the past where I'll say no refunds, but they can try and resell those spots to someone else in the group. Do what's simplest for you. Feel free to make strict rules about it too, because you're the one organizing it. And that's another bonus is that you can organize it on a day that you're available. So that works best for your schedule. Check around. Third, I'm going to be honest here. Homeschoolers can sometimes be a flaky bunch. Like, especially yes. if an event does not have a cost to it and it's super embarrassing to have like 40 people confirm yes to an event and then that day like six people show up so I handle this in a couple of ways one in one of my groups I let people know that my yeses must be firm and if you're gonna not go or you're gonna change your mind last minute you have to change your RSVP likewise I don't count maybes people can maybe all day Uh, to keep that event like showing up in their calendar feed like if we're booking it on Facebook that's fine I'm not counting the maybes I'm only counting the yeses what I don't want to do is spend a ton of time at the location like that morning figuring out all you know who all is showing up or not because somebody decided to ditch it at the last minute the second thing I do sometimes is to charge a small fee to hold their space that I will actually refund on arrival this was easier when we all wrote checks but you can do it now with Venmo PayPal Zelle too People are more likely to show up to something if they have to pay for it or they have already paid for it, even if it's a nominal fee. And money that you get from no-shows can go in your pocket or you can make a donation to the place or to the museum or wherever you're visiting. Yeah. And obviously, um, you're going to want to put out detailed information as far as the address, any parking information, hours, age-related info, if it's a trip that has restrictions, arrival time. I always fudge the arrival time, too. Again, <laughs> flake, <done> that. <laughs> flaky homeschoolers. Set a meetup time that's going to guarantee that most of your people are there well ahead of the program start time so that you're not going to have one person hold up the group. Also include info about lunch and snacks. Maybe maybe there's a picnic spot nearby for afterwards or for parents who have littles who aren't attending the program. I typically include a rule about what ages need a chaperone if parents want to drop them off and any information from the facility about their rules. 
have your contact information available. You may even want to tell people to contact you by text the day of because you'll be driving and might not see their message on another post or from the message forum if you're busy getting your kids ready and out the door. Right. I typically organize group events in Facebook just because that's where most of our homeschool groups are. I start with my immediate friend group or if it's a field trip that I'm organizing from a specific group, I'll start with them. If I then still need to fill spots, like if, if I need a lot of people to for this field trip to make, then I'll open it up to you know other homeschool groups or bigger groups in my area. Some people may just need numbers and so they set it up as a public group that anyone can join. But make sure you keep a detailed second list for yourself with payments collected for your references and if individuals are paying their own way make sure to include the information for that too. I just keep a note in my phone for that. Confirm with the location three days prior let them know final numbers and see if there's any additional information or details you'll need to pass on to your group. You can send reminders to your entire group on the day of the event get there early so that you have time to deal with any last minute communications from your attendees. I know sometimes whenever I'm running late and I'm the one that organizes I'm like, kids, come on, I can't be late. I'm the organizer. Right. (laughs) So you can see it's not that hard to plan and organize your own field trip. Uh, There's uh, really two kinds of homeschoolers out there, too. There's the people who like to plan and organize. And then there's the people who like to show up to things and do not ever want to plan something themselves. So that's perfect. Like, if you build it, they will come. There's plenty of people that want to come to the thing you plan. Oh, and one thing that I wanted to add is I created a freebie for the week. And it's something that we always used in our homeschool. Whenever we came home from a field trip, we would review what we did. And I had my kids rate from a one to five what they thought of the field trip kind of a review about what they liked or what they learned whether they wanted to do it again and I'll have that available on our website it'll be a pdf it'll be a free download for you so after you go on your field trip you can come home and use that I used it as our writing assignment for the day and you can too so go check it out In addition to that, we organize our top 100 homeschool field trip ideas into different categories like public service, community, transportation, history, museums, arts, outdoor, fun stuff. And so that list is going to be on our website. We'll have a blog post specifically about that, but we'll also have that available for download as a PDF. So you can just download that, hang that in your homeschool room and take a look when you want to be adventurous, just check out the list and have your child choose where they want to go. Field trips can be more than just extras in your homeschool. They're one of the best tools you have in your homeschooling toolbox. I hope we gave you a lot of ideas for where to go and maybe even the courage to plan one yourself. Adding field trips to your homeschool will make learning come alive for your children and create lifelong memories for both you and them. It does. It makes me want to go on one right now. Let's go. So tune in next week for the fourth episode in our high school series, episode 27, Advanced Courses and Testing. We're going to be talking about dual credit, dual enrollment, advanced placement, and CLEP, uh, which is College Level Examination Program, and all that and more. See you next time. See ya. Cheers. Be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com, as in been there, done that, btdthomeschool.com. You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the BTDT Been There, Done That Homeschool Podcast.